Okay, so uh, today we're going to look at the grade 11 control test 3, 20, 20 September. Okay. So the question says in question 1, you are given f of x equals negative uh, 2 to the negative x plus 1 and g of x equal to negative 4x plus 1. So we are given exponential function as well as a straight line. Okay? Question in question 1.1 1 .1 says, determine the coordinates of the y-intercept of f. So how do you calculate the y-intercept? How do you calculate the y-intercept? We let x equal 0. So it's of f of x, so I must use the f of x function. So f of 0 equals 2 to the negative 0 plus 1, which is 2. It says coordinates, so it's 0 and Okay, it's important that you write it in coordinate form. 1.2. In question 1.2, we are told sketch the graph of f and g, clearly showing all intercepts with the axis as well as the asymptotes. So let's go with f first. So as you can see on f of x, we have a horizontal asymptote that y is equal to 1. Okay. And you have a y-intercept at 2. So to generate another point of the graph, I need x equal to 1. Okay? Let's take this calculator away, yeah? Okay, so I need x equal to 1. By letting x equal to 1, you have f of 1 equals 2 to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 1 and a half. So if x is 1, y is 1 and a half. Okay? Or 3 over 2. <coughs> so it's a decreasing exponential function. As you can see, it's coming close to asymptote, but doesn't touch it. Okay? And that's the graph of f. So let's look at the graph of g. Okay? The g of x function we have negative 4x plus 1. So we say x intercept, let y equal to 0. <coughs> so now we say 0 equals negative 4x plus 1. Bring that over the equal sign, so 4x is equal to 1, so x equal to a quarter. A quarter is very close to the x-axis. Then now y intercept, what do you do for y intercept? We need x equal to 0. So g of 0 equals negative 4 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. Which is this point here. Not so. So we take a ruler and we draw the line going through 1 and a quarter. And this, of course, is a graph of g of x. Okay. So any confusion so far? You all understand, eh? Right. Very important, label the graphs if it's more than one graph on your axis, so on your system of axis. And clearly indicating your, um, your, your intercepts. Okay, so I can just make this a bit. Okay. That graph might cut or might not. Okay. <coughs> Then equation 1.3 says write down the domain and the range of f. So if you're looking at f, f is your exponential graph. As you can see, this is going to negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay? So your domain of f, I'll just write it here, 1.3. The domain of f, as you can see, negative infinity, positive infinity x in the element of all the real numbers. Okay? 
is look at the range of this graph, the range of f. This graph, does this graph exist at negative, does f exist at negative infinity? No, where does the graph start existing at? At 1 onwards. Does it include 1? No, why not? It's an asymptote. Okay, go for it. Don't sleep now. Okay. So y must be more than 0. Not so? So when you write that thing, you can now say y is greater than 0. Let's look at question 1.4. In question 1.4, we are asked to calculate the average gradient between, uh, of f between if x is equal to negative 2 and x equal to 1. So what I do is I find the corresponding y value at negative 2 by substituting negative 2 into the function. Uh, 2 is into negative, negative 2 plus 1, which is 5 there. So this point is negative 2 and 5. And f of 1, we already worked out. This is this point here, which was the one point I generated on the graph. That is u3 over 2. So for the average gradient, is going to be f of a, uh, b minus f of a over b minus a. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? So, if you now say 5, if this is f of b, it's 5 minus minus 2, which is this value here. Okay? Over 3 over 2 minus 1. So we find that in our calculator. Pull the calculator up here. Excuse us. Five plus two over three over two minus one. Okay, that gives us a gradient of fourteen. Is that correct? Is that correct? No. What is the correct gradient? Negative 7 over 6. Where's my mistake? Yeah, where's my mistake? What's up? The that that you interchange. Remember, this is, <coughs> if that is f of b, okay, this is f of b here, if this is b. And that is A, and this would be F of A. Not so. So my initial formula is correct, but my substitution is incorrect. So it's 3 over 2 minus 5 over A, which is 1 minus minus 2. That should be now correct. So it's 3 over 2 uh, minus 5 over 1 plus 2. Negative 7 over 6. Okay. So what does that mean to us? <coughs> if, they ask you to in, if they ask you to interpret that answer, what does that mean? You can tell me what does that mean? Okay. Since all of you know what nobody wants to tell us, it is between negative 2 and 1. The graph is decreasing at a rate of negative 7 over 6. Do you all understand? They ask you to um, interpret uh, that information there, or that calculation, or that answer. The graph is decreasing at a rate of uh, negative 7 over 6. Okay. Decreasing at a rate of 7 over 6. Okay. In equation 1.5, I'll just take it off the graph there. In equation 1.5, now I should calculate g of x minus f of x where x equal to negative 4. So that is exactly the same as saying g of minus 4 minus f of minus 4. Okay, 
So g of negative 4, so we got negative 4 into negative 4 plus 1 minus 2 into to the negative, negative 4 plus 1. Okay, so I made a mistake there. What is my mistake? Did it on purpose? Yes. There must be a bracket. Why? There's more than one term following a negative sign. I must have a bracket. Okay. From there we just enter it into the calculator. <coughs> it's a negative 4 into negative 4 uh, plus 1 minus open brackets 2 to the exponent negative negative 4 which is positive 4 plus 1 give me an answer of 0 answer is 0 ok in question 1.6 in question 1.6 uh, the question says g of x reflected about the x axis to form b of x so what is the rule if something is reflected about the x-axis? The y becomes negative. Not so. Something reflected about the x-axis, y becomes negative. So it's the graph of g of x. So remember g of x equation is negative 4 plus x. So if the y becomes negative, remember g of x is your y. If your y becomes negative, it's going to be negative y is equal to Negative 4x plus 1. Not so. But do we write a, a equation of a graph like this? No. We always have y to be positive and standing on its own. So I divide throughout by negative. So y is equal to 4x minus 1. And that is the equation of p of x. Okay. Then in questions 1.7, we are told if h of x equal to 3 times f of x, write down the equation of the asymptote of h of x, which is this here. But what is the equation of the asymptote of f of x? What is the asymptote of f of x? Without the 3 in front. What's the equation of the asymptote? y is equal to 1. Can you see that, people? So this graph has a factor of 3. So 1 times 3 is going to give you y is equal to 3 as you want, as you as you want some plus. Let's say we didn't know that. Then what we do is we affect the change here. So we say h of x is equal to 3 times f of x. What's the equation of f of x? The equation of f of x is 2 to the minus x plus 1. Not so. You multiply 3 in, it's 3 times 2 to the minus x plus 3. But remember, where's your, where's your asymptote? Your horizontal asymptote is that value there. Not so. So the equation is, therefore y is equal to 3. Will be your equation of your horizontal asymptote. Okay. Any confusion? So at this point, everybody should have gotten full marks, full 18 marks, no? Am I right? Oh my word, you guys are that group again, no? Every time I forget, you're the, the group that don't talk to me, no? Right, so let's look at the next one. Oops. Right, so now we're looking at question uh, question two. 
to get the questions up here. Okay, so first question. Okay, so the introduction says the graphs of f of x equals a into x plus p all squared plus q, so that is the completing of the square form, and g of x equal to k over x plus r plus d, are sketched below. So we got a parabola and we have a hyperbola graph. Okay, let's so write the equation here um, f of x equals a into x plus p all squared plus q and uh, g of x equals uh, k over x plus r plus d. Okay. Both graphs cut the y intercept at negative 4, okay, which is this point here. One of the points of intersection is 1 and negative 8, which is also the turning point of g of x. So that's the point of intersection and the, the turning point of the hyperbola of the parabola graph. Then we are told that the horizontal asymptote of P is Y is equal to negative 2, which is also drawn in there. Okay. So I did that so I can have the graph in focus then. Okay, that's 2.6. And we can have the questions next. Okay. Right. Okay. The first question says calculate the value of a, p, and q. Now the value of a, p, and q. So if you look at this here, we are given the turning point, which is uh, 1 and negative 8. Okay, we have the turning point, which is 1 and negative 8. So that is your p and your q value. That's your turning point for that graph. So we now say f of x is equal to a into x minus 1 squared minus 8. Not so. That was your turning point. Now we substitute the point that this parabola is going through. And which point is that? We have 0 and negative 4. Not so. Now at this point we're going to substitute um, 0 and negative 4. Remember this is an x and a y. So we have negative 4 equals so a into 0 minus 1 squared minus 8. Take negative 8 over, becomes positive 4, which is negative 4 plus 8. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, not so. Positive 1 times a is 8. So I got my a value, I got my p and my q. So there is a sort of that. So I got this, my p value is 1, and q, of course, is negative. Right, do you all agree with that? Yes? Your p value is 1. The p value is not 1. What is the p value? Negative 1. Okay, I must fill it in there. You see, sometimes the graphs is given. I'll show you now. You just take the calculator over here. You see, sometimes the graph is given in the form of y is equal to a into x minus p squared plus q. That is often given in that form. And then it will be your additive inverse. Okay? Yeah, I took it into account, but yeah, I didn't. So this is actually negative 1. Can you see that? And because that is negative 1 there, this will result in uh, x minus 1, which in turn gives you x plus 1 on your graph. Okay? So that's, that's my uh, foresight, oversight, because um, as I told you now, the form that is normally given is uh, x minus p. If I had said the paper, I would have said x minus p. Okay. But okay, it wasn't said by me. So I expected you guys to, to just outshine, yeah, because why you guys must prefer other people's paper. Yeah, I'm saying. No. <laughs> so uh, in 2.2 we are told 
that calculate the value of KR and D. Now, where does KR and D fit in? The equation of the hyperbola graph. Not so. So, the equation of the hyperbola graph is GF is equal to K over X plus R plus D. But we know what D is. D is what? The horizontal asymptote, which is negative 2. So, D is going to be negative 2. Okay. So D is sorted. So now, I'm going to substitute again this point here of 4 and a 0 and negative 4, which is your y-intercept. So we'll substitute 0 and negative 4 into g of x, which now reads uh, g of x equals k over x plus r minus 2. Okay, so we're going to go into that equation there. Okay? So, if we do the substitution, remember this is your x and a y value there. So we now say negative 4 is equal to k over x is 0 plus r minus 2. I take negative 2 over, becomes positive 2. So negative 2 is equal to k over r. So I cross multiply. So therefore k is equal to negative 2 r. And this is equation 1. Okay. Then what do I do? And I substitute another point that lies on this graph, which I do have. You have to substitute P, which is 1 and negative 4, into um, G of X equals the same as we had before. K over X plus R minus 2. People again, that's an X and a Y here. Okay? Is 1 and negative 8, not negative 4. Okay? So I say negative 8 is equal to, where did I get negative 4? Sorry. A negative 8 is equal to K over 1 plus R minus 2. Any confusion at this point? No? Take a 2 over. Becomes negative 8 plus 2, uh, two which is negative 6, equals k over 1 plus r. Cross multiply. So therefore, k is equal to negative 6 minus 6 r. And this is equation 2. So what do I do now? Simultaneous equations. So now we're going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. So if I see a k, I replace it with negative 2r. So in other words, we can conclude therefore negative 2r is equal to negative 6 minus 6r. X is a number uh, variable to one side, x is a number to one side. So it's going to be 4r is equal to negative 6. Divided by 4 both sides, therefore r is equal to negative 3 over 2. So what do we still need to do? Sleep a little bit, no? At least you relax your, your, your eyelids. No? Right. So what do we need to do now? Solve for k. So therefore k is equal to negative 2 times negative 3 over 2, which is 3. So k will be 3. So we've got um, K, R, and earlier on we've calculated uh, the coordinate, uh, the, the value of D. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, since I need the space here, I'm going to write down the equations of the two um, graphs. So f of x now reads f of x equal to 4 into x minus 1 minus 8. We'll squared on that thing. And g of x equals um, what was g of x? It's going to be k which is uh, 3 over x 
plus R. R value here is what? Negative 3 over 2. Um, minus 2. Okay. You will agree with that? Any confusion, people? Not yet. Okay. So in question 2.3, we are told, write down the equation of the axis of symmetry of F. Now, what type of graph is F? Parabola graph. So the axis of symmetry is going to be that line going through here. Down the middle here of the parabola graph. And that equation is x is equal to 1. That's your axis of symmetry of the parabola. x is equal to 1. It's always the x value of the turning point. Okay? So uh, for 2.3 we just say x is equal to 1. In 2.4 it says determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of g, which has a negative gradient. So the axis of symmetry for g will be 1 of 2. Okay? Remember now that axis of symmetry of g of x, there will be 2. The 1 being at x is equal to 3 over 2, which is coming from that value there. Not so? And your horizontal asymptote value is coming from there. So y is equal to negative 2. Those are your two asymptotes. Okay? However, your axis of symmetry is also 2. The one going through like that. This is equal, y is equal to negative x plus c. And the other going through like that. Y is equal to positive x plus c. Not so. It's two axis of symmetry. But it was specified that the one, to, the one with the negative gradient. So which one are they referring to? Y is equal to minus x plus c. You all see that? You will understand what they're looking for. So I'm going to use y is equal to minus x plus c. Y is equal to minus x plus c. And the only point that this axis of symmetry is going through is that point. And what's the coordinates of that point? 3 over 2 and negative 2. Okay. 3 over 2 and negative 2. So that I'll substitute that uh, into the equation of the x of symmetry. So negative 2 is equal to negative 3 over 2 plus c. Correct? Take it over. You're going to get the negative of is equal to c. Is that correct? So y is equal to negative 3 over 2x minus. So that is the equation of the x of symmetry with the negative gradient. Okay. Any confusion? Am I moving too fast? No. Okay. Equation 2.5. It says write down the domain and the range of G. Okay? So what graph is G of X? What type of graph is G of X? It is your hyperbola graph. Not so. So what do you notice about the hyperbola graph? It's going to negative infinity and positive infinity. So it's all the values that is accounted for. Not so. So for the domain of G, we say X is an element of all real numbers. However, there's one value that doesn't exist on this graph, which is what? Which value doesn't exist on this graph? 3 over 2. X is just not equal to? Sorry? You say something? Okay. Let's look at the range of this graph. Range of G. People range all possible Y values. Not so. This graph goes to negative infinity, positive infinity. So what do I write there? Y is an element of all real numbers. But there's one value for which Y cannot be equal to. Y is just not equal to negative 2. And there's now many ways of writing this. Okay? I could have just said X is more than 3 over 2, but less than 3 over 2. And Y is... Um, more than negative 2 and less than negative 2. Okay. 
Or you could have written it in um, set folder notation. You could have said y um, is an element for the range now, no? of course. Y is an element of uh, we, uh, its curve bracket, negative infinity, to negative 2. Curve bracket, union, negative 2, to infinity. Okay, now, um, what's the name always writes it in that form? No? Okay, let the back. That is the, the formula to be written. Not block brackets, because it's excluding. So if you're going to use the set builder notation, it must be curve brackets. Okay. Then in 2.6, let's take this out here. Question 2.6. We are told that the graph of P of x is formed when f of x reflected about the y-axis. Now if something is reflected about the y-axis, what happens? It is reflected in y-axis. What's the rule? X becomes negative. Well done. Nobody wants to say it. But they're all thinking it, no? So you reflect it in the y-axis, X becomes negative. So it's formed from the graph of G of X. So I'm going to use this graph here. Okay? So in other words, we have not in F of X any longer. It changes to Y now. Because f of x is defined already, so it's 4 into minus x, minus 1 squared minus 8. So what I do is I take negative out as a common factor. If I take negative out as a common factor and I square it, it will remain positive. Okay? I'm just going to write it in here. Take negative out as a common factor. And I square it, that will remain positive. Okay? So take it out. So it's equal to 4 into x plus 1 squared minus 8. So that's the first transformation that took place in this graph. And translated 4 units to the right. So it moves 4 units to the right. So 4 units in that direction. So what happens? Do we add or subtract 4 on the x? We? Yes, well done. We subtract 4 on the x. So y is equal to 4 into, so 4, we um, subtract 4 on the x, so it's x minus 4 plus 1 squared minus 8. So uh, we got 4 into x minus 3 squared minus 8. Write down the equation of p of x, and of course p belongs there. Okay, people if you wanted, you could multiply the story out and... Uh, Get no extra marks here, otherwise you can leave it like this. And I know some of you could have moved from the step here, from there, and gone to one, or just do it in two steps, no problem. You can do it in one step, also no problem. Okay? Um, we will give you the, fourth, uh, the full three marks. Okay? Do we have any confusion here? No? Yes? Uh, we have a question? So in uh, question 3.1, you are given something on your, on your answer sheet. You are asked to uh, sketch the graph, so I'm just going to prepare an axis quickly. Right, people, listen. With regards to question... Three. In question 3, we are told that the graph of the function f of x, no. Okay, I'm just going to draw the graph. Uh, tomorrow we will end off. Oh, we'll start tomorrow with this, okay.